if I could slap you on the face right now, I would. Trust me, I really would. And no, not in the aggressive, I don't like you way, but in the way to wake you up, okay? Now, I don't suggest anyone goes and slaps themselves. Go have a cold shower and wake yourself up because you need to hear what I'm about to tell you guys. This is an extremely important video because I've seen a lot of people wavered in their conviction, not in their altcoins, forget altcoins for a second, but their whole entire philosophy of crypto, okay? We're moving sideways, nothing's happening, and most people tend to think, oh my God, nothing's happening, this is bad. All these magical life game changing wealth, that's sort of the crazy money is going to be right down the drain, right? It's just, it's kind of like, it's a testament to the human brain, right? I think the likes of TikTok and YouTube shorts, all these, you know, quick scrolling programs have ingrained in us that if it's not happening today or yesterday, okay, it's not worthwhile looking at for the next X amount of time. So I want to make this video today to wake you up, to show you some invaluable points that I think you need to take away and also things that you need to be very careful of into the bull run, right? Whether you are someone that's like, oh yeah, Karen, I know this stuff already. I don't care if people are going to tell me to sell my old coins. It's all over, Red Rover. I'm not listening to that group of people. I know the bull run's coming. I know life-changing wealth on the horizon. I'm also speaking to you as well, right? Because what you might be lacking, especially if it's your first cycle, is things you only find out the hard way on. What do I mean by that? Stay tuned, guys. Again, very important video this one is. Now, of course, guys, before we continue, if you do find yourself enjoying this content, and I guarantee you, you will, because that is the intention of this, is to teach you and entertain you, that I want you to go down there right now and kindly drop a like on this video. It really does brighten my day up. And also hit the subscribe button, because you know what? It's pretty convenient for you to do so. All righty. So let's begin by looking at, first of all, the catalysts for this cycle. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I want to touch on these a bit more in a video in about a week or so. But suffice it to say, I've touched on individual altcoin catalysts right in a recent Twitter post. You need to go and follow me on Twitter right now if you aren't already following me. Right, the likes of HBAR tokenizing a BlackRock fund. You know, some of these Web2 focused projects pretty much doing their best at having Web2 traditional market penetration, which we haven't seen before, right? There's a whole new group of eyes in crypto, and that's likely because not from Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also because of direct old coin interactions with companies and people, okay? Not just that, of course, we have the Ethereum ETF news coming up here. Now, it hasn't, it's been approved, but the finalization to actually have these ETFs trading is the S1 form. That has yet to be approved and come out yet. So we do have another catalyst in that. Of course, we have the inflows from those ETFs, as well as the inflows from the Bitcoin ETFs, and all the general buzz around the crypto market is tenfold what it's been in the past, in my personal opinion. And I think looking at right now where we are in the market comparable to the previous cycle again we're at all-time high market cap levels so we've got a lot of money flowing in the space right now guys not just that but of course it's the election year over in the u.s which means that politicians are trying to do everything they can to get as many voters as possible which means and fortunately for us crypto is a big topic at the moment so they're trying to get as many votes as possible there's been some let's just say controversy apparently in some of the more recent news over there regarding Trump and all that. So crypto may have had a bit of a backwards moment, but we'll see how it plays out. I'm still optimistic that we're going to have a pretty successful year because of this. But again, we will see. Not just that, of course, but with the old queens individually, guys, we have seen what the best narratives are so far. Narratives are, again, like the tide that raises all the ships, okay? If it's a you know quality narrative like AI, like gaming, like Deepin, Layer 2, these ones I've ranked top 10 and 9s, they're going to pretty much mean that most coins you can see over here, apart from the white ones, will do well. Now, in that, we're looking for probably ranked seven and above. The ones that are ranked below, like some of these less, I guess, so far proven narratives of the cycle, NFTs, IoT, supply chain, you know, Web2 layer one projects like Quant, for example. I mean, look, these can do well, but they really have to stand out to actually have any sort of gain. It's kind of the complete opposite of the tide raises all the ships for these coins. But of course, we know what they are right now. We can come to many different websites like June and have a look, right? Of course, meme coins are doing well. Identity is actually doing a lot better than what I initially thought so far. Liquid staking is doing well. AI is doing well. D-Pin, real world asset, you know, gaming. These will all do very well this cycle. And not just that, of course, we will be tracking this on my private community, guys. I'll be building out a whole entire platform tracking all of these narratives. I've done one example here with the AI narrative with the relative strength on the market to have a peek into what narratives are going to be popping off next, kind of like what the next boats, based on the next wave, will be raised so we can make some pretty juicy returns. 
Now, of course, we're also looking for the coins that have been performing well relative to the entire market. This, of course, is market dominance. So market dominance is a very, very crucial metric to look at, guys. In the case of Near Protocol here, we can see that ever since the lows in October of 2023, Near Protocol has done nothing but go up and up and up. Yes, some, you know, backpedaling, but of course, that's completely normal depending on what narratives are popping off. But suffice to say, it's doing extremely well. And so this gives us an indication on coins like this that these will do well because they are already beating the market. Market dominance means not market caps going up. It means the market cap is going up in excess to the entire market. So if a market dominance stays the same, that means that if the market goes up, it goes up in sort of parallel with it. If it comes down, it comes down the same way as well. But if it's going up in terms of market dominance, it's gaining even more than the market's moving up. Likewise, if it's losing dominance, of course, on the way down, that is a good indication that, of course, it's losing market cap and the whole market's going up, like XRP over here at its lowest dominance since back in 2017, which is kind of crazy. There could be a possible floor happening here. However, I do want to say there are many, many coins like this. Quant, for example, I mean, the list goes on. These are the coins. Again, they can have a turnaround. That is completely normal and completely fine. They can flip on a dime. That's the whole beautiful part about crypto. We don't know until we know. However... It's like hedging, right? Hedging risk. You don't really want to be buying something that has a lot of the odds stacked against it. Yes, it's how you can make some pretty crazy nutty money, like these micro caps 100 or 1,000 xing, or you can just strive to pretty much get secured gains going with coins that are looking prosperous and you know just accepting less multiples like with Near Protocol, for example. Not to say Near Protocol is going to not do many multiples. I just think if you're looking for a 20, 30x on your protocol, you're kind of dreaming at this point, okay? Now, we're also looking for coins that have been performing well as well with their price, especially on these market downturns, okay? Ondo Finance is a prime example of this. I made a video on this last night. If you want to watch an Ondo breakdown, go watch that video on the channel. But, you know, this project's been moving up pretty much in a linear fashion. A few bumps along the way, completely normal. But I think average out, it's pretty much linear. And this is, again, when the market's been going down. So there is a lot, a lot of strength for Ondo. And you will find, of course, in addition to the market going down and this going up, that Ondo's market dominance will be going up as well. So these are the signs we're looking for, okay? In prosperous narratives, we're looking for, of course, the global catalysts as well. So looking at, is the crypto market going to survive? That's obviously a big yes at this point, at least for this cycle. I think it will in perpetuity. It's probably going to be a bit of a culling at some point in the next bear market, but that's a story for another day. And we're looking for coins that are gaining its market dominance and also their price is stabilizing or even going up in times of, you know, potential crash or times of, I guess, sideways action, okay? Now, all this to say, all right, that's a, that's a given, okay? Let me just silence everyone saying, oh, well, Karen, I'm panicking. Should I sell? Should I? What should I do? I want to get out of the market. Oh, this is boring. I'll go do something else in the next coming months until something happens. So it's the worst thing you can do. But even if you are someone that knows all of this stuff already, there is something that you probably don't understand, guys. And this is what I kind of want to take the direction of this video in very quickly here. And that is this, when to sell. All right, I'm not going to go into a full exit plan. I've made many videos on this. I've got a course on this. It's besides the point. But what I want to tell you in this video is the difference between buying at a range that's reasonable and buying towards a price prediction. Because like in the case of uh, HBAR over here, I mean, if the price goes up, okay, the price could go anywhere. The last thing you want to do is sell in something like the red zone over here between the max ladder sell level and the price prediction where you're trying to sell somewhere in this range. And then the price does something like this, right? It comes up and then comes down. It never goes up again. It probably wouldn't look like that. It'd probably be a little bit more steep, kind of like this. But ultimately, you don't want to be pushing your luck with these coins, okay? People hear me say price prediction, price prediction. A price prediction, in my opinion, is where we're expecting the wick to go to, right? The very max price. Now, you should never aim for that because, again, we come to a point where we have very illiquid markets, right? Sellers versus sellers, which doesn't work. Sellers have to sell to buyers. You're not going to have anyone buying at times of high turbulence and at times of when everyone's expecting the price to only go down because, as we've seen before, and if you're from the last cycle trying to time the top, you notice for a fact, you will literally be at a point where you end up selling extremely far down. If you have your sell level set here, for example, okay, and the price comes up and spikes and everyone's selling here, you probably might not end up getting a, you know orders filled until down here or even lower, way beneath where you've expected it to, okay, because that's slippage. So it's important to be realistic when we're looking at these. So that's why I always tell people, first of all, find your coins 
that are going to allow you to exit a position in the green zone, okay? Not the gray zone, even if you can help it, okay? Basically, the way we come up with these different zones is you have the price prediction on top here. I've got a price prediction course coming out for you all, but I've got a price prediction sheet as well if you need that. 25% down from that price prediction level is the max ladder sell level. This is the price I deem if you are going to have you know, if you're going to be the greediest person alive, this is when you should actually try to sell, right? 25% off that price prediction level. And it's called the max ladder sell level because really you're going to have to sell some levels above. I'll show you here in a second to ensure that you actually get that average sell level out. You can't quite see, but there is a gray zone in here. The gray zone pretty much is just who bloody knows. That's about 10% down from the max ladder sell level. I would say between 10 and 25% down probably could constitute the gray zone. But nevertheless, the green zone here is where you want to aim for, okay? The green zone is where price is likely to go. It's the safest possible area. So if you're looking for an altcoin to buy, like HBAR, for example, and you're like, okay, well, if I buy today's price at, let's say, 10 cents, and the green zone ends at, let's just say, $1.35, how many multiples is that, right? So you'd come and actually have a look. Okay, that is a max of about a 12X so or a 13X. So if you're looking for any more than a 13X, maybe you can get away with the green zone, the gray zone, but really you shouldn't be trying to do that, okay? So you might need to find a new coin in that case because again, you don't want to be stuck with illiquid markets. The worst thing in the world because again, you probably end up selling way, way down here and miss the mark entirely. So if you're someone who's buying at the current price and not happy with the multiples, find a new coin. It's as simple as that because this is what will literally happen in the cycle. In that exact same situation, right? The same price is $2 for the price prediction, 25% down is $1.50 for the max out of sale level. Greens, gray zone is 10% lower, right? Your actual sell level is down here. Well, you might have a situation where one day, like what happened recently with HBAR, okay? We have a massive, massive God candle up. The next day goes even higher initially at least, and then it comes back down and then we close down here, okay? So if you're not careful and if you don't actually have all your cell levels punched in, like you can see I've done over here, okay? On this, all these little purple dashed lines are my, you know, cell levels, which again, I've given to you guys completely for free in the private community here. You can go and punch us all in, does all the math for you, okay? If you punch these levels in to this, you be able to see yourself, okay? What is realistic, and ensuring that if there is a massive spike like this when you're sleeping, wake up, go to the gym, go to work, and you just miss your portfolio, at least your uh, exchange will actually sell your positions for you, okay? So this is kind of what I want to emphasize, all right? Now, if you wanted help with this, again, I've got one-on-ones I do once a month. Otherwise, just jump into the private community. We have a wealth of knowledge over there, of course. You can go ahead and use these sheets over there. That's why I've designed them for you to save you hundreds of hours. I like to think of the market in the lens of someone like myself three, four years ago, when I first got in the space, all right, what tools would I want to help me on my journey? Now, I'm not trying to push the private community. I'm saying the tools are there to help you. And like I said, I've got more coming, all right? So all I wanted to say, guys, be very careful of everything. You know, don't get shaken out of a position unless it's absolutely warranted, like there really is truly FUD or, or an event that may actually cause the market to capitulate entirely. Also, you want to be careful of individual altcoins and selling at this point, okay? But be careful with the ones you select. Check out the narratives. Are they performing well? And, you know, is their dominance growing? Thanks all. Talk to you all soon. Take good care. Bye.